Hey TCS TV viewers, today I'm going to talk about some of my choices for packs, straps and tripods for shooting the great outdoors. Summer is just around the corner here and I cannot wait to get outside and enjoy it. Now there are a ton of gear options out there if you're looking for a new bag or tripod or a camera strap. I'm going to walk you through some of my top picks in either of those categories as well as a more budget friendly option. However, I really want you to think about what features you're looking for in a camera bag or in a tripod or a strap. Hopefully this is going to help you make decisions on the gear that you're buying in the future. Backpacks are by far my favorite way of carrying my gear around and the reason is comfort and comfort is key when it comes to carrying all these things. Now there are other camera bags on the market like over the shoulder bags and sling bags but they're not going to be nearly as good for a long period of time. A backpack evenly distributes the weight over both shoulders and makes it the easiest way to carry around. When it comes to choosing the size of the backpack, the system that you're running and how much gear you're planning on taking is certainly going to be a big factor. If you're running a full frame system with a 600 F4, of course you're going to need a much bigger backpack compared to these guys running Micro Four Thirds with their selection of lenses. Now it's not just the body and the lens we're looking at, but everything else that goes into the backpack. So think extra memory cards and cables potentially and filters, all these different things, but don't forget an extra change of clothes and potentially food. Now if you are an avid photographer, and your friends aren't, let them carry the food. Just make sure you stay friends with them on the trail. Now, if budget really isn't a big concern, one of my favorite bags is the Shimoda Explorer 40 starter kit. This is a fantastic backpack for a bunch of different reasons. One, it's a fairly sizable backpack, so it's going to hold a ton of gear, but it's the build quality that I like and some other features here. Things like weather sealed zippers which really help out and it's a weather sealed material. Now there is an all weather cover that goes over top of it for really hard downpours but for the most part I don't have to worry about covering it up if there's rain. Something else that's unique about this bag is the comfort and fit. We talk about comfort how it's so important. This is one of the few bags on the market which allows you to adjust the shoulder straps for different torso lengths. This is really going to help customize this bag and make it much more comfortable for you. Another feature I really like about this backpack is how they've implemented the ability to carry around a sizable tripod. Now a tripod is something we need to for a lot of different photographic styles and being able to carry with us effortlessly really makes a big difference and I like what Shimoda has done with the auxiliary pocket on the side here. Outside of the main compartment for a camera and the tripod section, there are a couple other areas that allow you to carry your change of clothes and some food and stuff like that. It's a very durable, rugged built, hardcore backpack that's going to be very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. Now it is a bit on the pricey side, so if you don't have the same kind of budget you want to spend on this, there are some other alternatives on the market. Another bag that I really like that's half the size but also half the price of the Shimoda is the Think Tank Mindshift 18 liter backlight. This is a really good little backpack that is very well built. Although it doesn't have the same weather sealing on the outside with the fabric from the Shimoda, it is still fairly weather resistant and does come with a cover as well for rain. Comparing this bag to the Shimoda, one big difference you're going to find is the ability to customize the fit. We have much more flexibility with the Shimoda than we do with this bag. The shoulder straps just don't have that same level. The other difference I noticed that's a big one for a lot of people is the ability to hold a tripod. With the Shimoda, it was off to the side and didn't interrupt with the operation of the bag. With the Think Tank bag, the tripod is mounted directly in the center of the back of the bag. Now it does make the bag evenly weighted between both shoulders which is nice however it does interfere with the ability to access the bag and the pockets and accessories on the back. I do like that both of these bags are made of high quality components and little touches like the zippers that are going to be used most frequently are generally higher quality and more robust. Now if you look at the market there are a ton of backpacks on the market so I encourage you to really take a look at what features are important. Little things that some people don't think about are the quality of the fanny belt. Your entry level backpacks generally have a very thin webbing strip for their fanny belt which doesn't really do much for you at all. If you're going to be walking around with some heavier gear for a long period of time a great quality fanny belt makes a big difference.
For most people into photography, buying a tripod is a big process. You think it's really simple. Three legs and away you go. However, if your style of photography doesn't include a tripod, consider yourself lucky. It's one less thing you have to worry about and carry around with you. But for those of us who do need a tripod in our kit, there are a bunch of factors to contribute to your decision making. First off, you have to look at the height of the tripod. What am I using it for? There's a bunch of different materials being used. Primarily, we have carbon fiber and aluminum. Carbon fiber is the premium material. It tends to absorb vibration much better than aluminum does. Lots of things to kind of consider. So let's get into two of my favorite tripods. This is the Manfrotto Beefree Advanced tripod. Now you can see it folds down to relatively compact size, which is going to make it easier to carry around and throw into a backpack, things like that. It is an aluminum build, so watch your digits when it gets out cold. You're going to want to wear gloves when you're handling the aluminum. The head itself does allow you to do panoramic work and it holds a decent amount of weight. Think micro four thirds and most crop sensor cameras with smaller lenses, no problem whatsoever. The plate system is Manfrotto's RC2 plate. It's been around for Ever. Now, I prefer the Arca Swiss plate system, so be aware if you're looking at the tripod for that. But overall, this tripod represents a very good value. Now, I like them both. However, I really like the Leo Photo LQ324C tripod, otherwise known as Mr. Q in the Leo Photo lineup. Now, this is a higher end tripod featuring carbon fiber build quality, and it's got this amazing looking carbon fiber pattern to it. Much easier to handle and work with, it does have the grip locks as well, but it is a little bit taller, a little bit more sturdy, and can handle a higher weight capacity. And that's just the tripod step up into this LH40 ball head, and it uses the Arca Swiss style of plate, which is by far and away the more popular plate system. These days we're finding cameras are being used as much for video as they are for stills. And when it comes to mounting a camera onto a tripod, both those applications require different styles of heads. Right now I have a photo head on here which allows me to tilt and move the lens in different angles I want. But if I want to shoot video with a ball head, it's very tricky unless I'm doing nothing but a static subject. So being able to switch over to a video head is really nice and convenient. Now in the past, typically we'd have to carry two heads around, unscrew one, screw on the other one, or bring a separate tripod all along altogether. The Mr. Q tripod from Leo Photo has a trick feature of very quickly allowing you to swap heads. Now, these are just two tripods that I've chosen today. However, there are a host of tripods on the market. If you look at your entry-level tripods, though, a word of caution is that typically they don't hold the same weight capacity that these guys do. They're certainly not as stable, and that's going to affect your shots and frustrate you as a photographer, especially if you're getting into long exposures. Look into a good quality tripod that's going to meet your needs as far as height, weight, how much you want to carry, how low to the ground it can go, but certainly is not going to frustrate you. Typically tripods are going to last you for a long, long time, so it's well worth spending a little bit more money on. The last thing I want to talk about today are camera straps. Now there are a ton of camera straps on the market and they've just been variations of things we've used forever. Basically around your neck, hold the camera in front of you. Now they hold the camera there, but your neck doesn't like you for doing that. Everybody who's used a camera like this, especially a heavier camera, will complain about how it's chafing their neck and how it's bothering them. So in recent years, we've seen a much better camera strap system come out and it's the over the shoulder style of camera straps. Black Rapid has been doing it and Peak Design as well. Black Black Rapid has been making crossbody camera straps for a long time. This is the Black Rapid Sport with featuring a rubberized grip over the shoulder holding the strap in place. Now the key to their system is the camera slides up and down the strap rather than being fixed to it. It's really nice and it's very fast when I want it to take a picture and I want to grab my camera, it's right there and I can bring it up without any hassle whatsoever. However, the way this strap attaches to the camera takes up the quarter 20 thread on the bottom of the camera. It's a little less flexible than the Peak Design system. I really like the Peak Design strap system. Now this is the Peak Design Lite. This is the middle of the three sizes. They come in different widths depending on what your comfort level is. And some things I like about it right off the bat is how quickly they are to adjust for size. If I'm wearing a big poofy jacket when it comes to winter time or just a t-shirt in the summer, I can easily adjust the strap size to make it fit properly. Now I also like that it's based on their anchor link system. So if I want to get rid of the strap and put my camera on a tripod and not have to worry about the strap hanging off, it's a really easy disconnect. Connect. I can also apply some different straps. It's made of the seatbelt like material which easily slides around any fabric that it's on so it doesn't stick to it whatsoever. When I slide the camera up and down the whole strap easily slides around me making it really easy to work with. Now I like these crossbody style of camera straps because I can hold a much heavier camera and lens combination for a lot longer period of time without any fatigue. 
I've had a lot of fun talking about these products today and this just represents a very small sampling of what's available on the market. There are of course a ton of products both in bags and tripods and camera straps of all different price points and different feature sets. What I want to do with this video is to get you guys thinking about what's important for you, what your needs are and to research it properly and make the most educated decision you can to get the most out of your gear and of course your dollar. Now I want to know what you guys think of the decisions I've made today on my camera gear or if there's any other products that you really like that I should know about. Make sure you leave comments down below, follow us on Instagram and please subscribe, hit the notification bell and we'll catch you again next time. I hope you're making me look pretty f***ing epic here, Drew. Oh, thanks for sticking around. If you are wanting to watch more of our previous content, click up here. And if you are Canadian and want to shop local, click the camera store link down here.